Because you see that splashing green. Yeah. 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 That makes That's it. You know, probably screaming into this has caused these to break. I could only fucking hope. And I will say. That this shit would act a lot better. I'm gonna tell you something. Where the fuck did you get this? Uh, Nicole bought it for us just to use on the podcast. Did she really? Yeah, she did. Wow. Which is excellent intuition. Doesn't yeah. All right. Here we are. Back from the dead. Thanksgiving. 13 pounds heavier. <laughs> <laughs> if you just stretch. <laughs> If you stretch out the uh, the face, <laughs> look at this shit. It's fucking amazing. Like, stretch your fingers. God. <laughs> no. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah. 600 pounds of fat ass setting this shit. Set in this chair. You know, the microphone is working surprisingly well on my hat. You should try it. No. It never fucking hears you. <sighs> on the end of the bottle. Just talking to the it's wood. A damn good fucking whiskey bottle the whole time. Oh, sorry. <clears throat> Okay, not. Anyways, this is the veil, huh? We're back. We're back after <sighs> a one week sabbatical. I hate that word. Why'd you use it? Because it just sounded appropriate. All right. So, <clears throat> I had a good Thanksgiving. Did you? Yeah, what'd you do over, over the. <clears throat> Oh, uh, yeah. This jacket smells like shit. Because I was like running in the rain yesterday. Yeah, sure. Okay. But you can fix that smell right up. So, <clears throat> you were, I'm responding to your what question. Was that? <laughs> Don't talk to me. There's a pin. Course. All right, listen, shut the fuck up. Uh, I went to my grandmother's. Did you? Ate food, had a good time. Then we went to my parents, ate food, had a good time. Really? And uh, yeah. Yeah. Would have never guessed. No, not at all. So, <clears throat> what'd you do? Went to Amarillo, mm -hmm. which uh, usually is very plet. For those of you that don't know what just happened, he used up all the fuel <laughs> in his lighter lighting a cigar. Worked perfect. I got lighter. Oh, can I use it now? Thanks. I got lighter in the car. Soft flame. <clears throat> Last week, you gave me shit for using that soft flame lighter. Two weeks ago. Whatever the fuck. 
and now you have one. It's a big collider. Soft <clears throat> Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. Uh -huh. The veil is always fantastic. Isn't it? Is this the veil? Yes. It is the veil. Maduro, San Andreas wrapper, Nicaraguan filler. You know what the veil tastes like? Christmas. Mm. So, at an extravagant mm -hmm. time in Amarillo, though the Dallas drivers have moved out there, have moved out there, <clears throat> and they I, drive just like. I just realized what's wrong. What? The table is crooked. Anyways. Adds flair. <clears throat> yeah, sure. What is this? Uh, this you? I think this is 10. This is our 10th podcast. Man, look at there. We grow up so fast. Mm -hmm. Did you adjust that? Because <clears throat> I feel like I'm rather pale. Crooked. This thing? No. What was it good? Now I can't fucking see. So, here's the deal. <clears throat> we have an event coming up. All right. December 10th, it's next Saturday. Um, going to be a Christmas party at El Dorado of McKinney. Uh, we should have a certain cigar that we smoked within recent weeks. We should have them in to give out as freebies. Really? Yes. The fuck is that? It's a fucking moth. There's a goddamn moth in here. How did a fucking moth get in here? Son of a fucking... We're gonna fucking kill it. Get it! Get it! Take it out! <laughs> Where the fuck did you even get that? What? It just appeared. Was it on the table? Jesus. Fucking shoot it. Get that little shit. Come back! Open the garage. Open the garage. Fuck. Get the fuck out of here. Get the fuck out of here. Get out of here, you goddamn jackass. Stay out. Fuck, fuck. I can't really hear you again. I'm breaking the fucking pants. I have a question. Why was that up? Because you turned, you uh, unscrewed the wife last time. Oh. Uh, Remember? No. Yeah, figured. Yeah. Wow. Sorry about that. I had uh, emergency procedures. Mm -hmm. I had an intruder. The FBI. They made moths and they uh, they're flying around. Not that they wouldn't listen to us through our phones, but yeah. Anyways, going on. All the people from Dallas move to Amarillo. And you know what? They drive. You know how they drive out there? Terrible. Like shit. Yeah, figured. Figured. Mm. What do you think of the backdrop? I like it. We got Kentucky State Police. San Utah? Yeah. San Angelo PD. Where's Brian? Brian, Texas? Brian College Station uh -huh. up here. Mississippi Highway Patrol. Florida Highway Patrol. Utah Highway Patrol. Boulder City. We got, was that? Newport, Virginia. Canton, Ohio. New Jersey State Police Marine Law Enforcement Bureau. And Callaway County Sheriff's Department. And you only got about 100,000 more to put up, right? Yeah. Yeah. 
So, I want to tell you something. What? The, what I was saying is we should have a certain cigar arriving. The one we smoked last week? Yeah, the, the new, the cigar in the LPC series. Oh. Uh, the okay. original. Okay, yeah. okay, yeah. That yeah. one is actually, was very hard to get again. Mm -hmm. It was gonna be the original one year, but we chose a different cigar. Yeah, there's a, a few things that we had to do to people to get that cigar in stock again. Uh, originally, it was gonna take till February to get this cigar. But we persuaded some people, yeah, made them an yeah, offer we yeah, yeah, knew they couldn't yeah, refuse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Anyways, we got that cigar again at someone else's expense. Yeah. We paid for him. Just. Yeah. You didn't pay for him? Anyways. So. I want to try a new segment. All right. I want to introduce a segment called Badass of the Week. Oh, yeah. Can you add like photos into the video, like pop up on the screen and stuff? Can you do that? Uh, yeah. All right. So, the guy we're talking about today, the first. All right. Where's he going to be? Where are we going to put him? We'll put him right here. He's this guy right here. Right there. Yeah, point in the center. Right, right, right there. I'm gonna I'm gonna overlay it right in here. All right, yes, so. it sounds like fine. Right there. That the, guy right there. You see him? You see him? He's a badass. Hold on. He's a yeah. Anyways, his name is Arthur D. Simons. He is he Simmons. was Simons. He was the United States Army Special Forces. He was a colonel. Uh, he led the Sun Tai Raid in Vietnam, mm -hmm. which is, he was a badass. Mm -hmm. uh, if you ever have time, um, we don't have, uh, the, describing that story of the Sun Tai Raid would take well over an hour. So we don't have time to do that. But if you ever have time, look up the Sun Tai Raid. There's a book about it. And, uh, there's a book about it. The entire thing's gonna be fucking distorted. Just no. okay. Well, if you ever have fucking time, look up the Sun Tirade. There's a book about it, and it's pretty fucking dope. Um, he also helped Ross Perot rescue his employees from Iran. You know, a lot of people have not heard that story about Ross Perot. And yeah. Do you want to talk about it a little bit? So, of course. Don't it's a great me. story to listen to while smoking a cigar. Yes. For real. So for those of you that don't know who Ross Perot is, Google it. You'll find a lot of information about him. He uh, owned EDS, Electronic Data Systems, based out of Dallas. <clears throat> and um, he had an office over in Iran. Well, if we all know that several decades ago. It's a, Iran's like South Dallas. Uh, yeah. yeah. Iran and the U.S. had a little bit of a, a disagreement. Mm. And uh, Iran, they took uh, embassy employees hostage. Well, they also arrested, unlawfully arrested the EDS employees over there in Iran, Tehran, to be exact. And Ross Perot went through all the legal channels, trying to get the U.S. government involved. But, of course, they didn't do shit. So he, Ross Perot, recruited Arthur Simons uh, to recruit some EDS employees trained them up and he sent them over there into Iran and they rescued EDS employees from Iran when the US government didn't do a fucking thing. As usual. So look it up. There's a book called On Wings of Eagles. It talks about Ross Perot and that whole deal. <clears throat> and uh, look up the Sun Tai Raid. There's a book about it. Um, Arthur Simons, he's a, a legend in Special Forces history. Legend. So, phenomenal story. You gotta, gotta research it. Okay. So, what, um, what are some of the things he did off the top of your head? Mm, I remember he, uh, 
I remember I got some notes here. What was his uh, role on Ross Perot's team? He basically uh, trained up uh, the employees that were selected to be on that team. Okay. He trained them, you know, taught them how to use <clears throat> firearms efficiently. He trained them to not be uh, slow when it came to running. Uh, just trained them up physically and mentally to, to go over there and basically perform a jailbreak in Tehran. They, Which worked out perfectly. It worked out perfect because... Both of those employees came back to the U.S. alive, and all the team members came back to the U.S. alive. It's pretty cool. I think Arthur Simon had a lot to do with that. <clears throat> that was a fascinating story, by the way. And uh, we had the pleasure of meeting one of the guys mm -hmm. that were on that, too, that we Absolutely. smoked cigars with. Yeah, we uh, smoked cigars with one of the team members that went over there to Tehran. Yeah, and that's Phenomenal guy. Is that how you found out about that story? Yeah. Yeah, that's how I found out. Yeah, he told me about it, and I checked it, researched it, and, uh, checked the validity of it, and it's all true. It's all awesome. a bit of it. <clears throat> it's, a, it's actually crazy. You know, you never think that that was a thing, but, yeah, it happened. Yeah. Uh, and <laughs> the, um, why that all started, I'm not going to get into that because it's a very controversial subject. But to think of why that happened, why Iran took hostage of the embassy employees and why they unlawfully arrested ADS employees, uh, to know why they did that mm -hmm. infuriates the fuck out of me. If you don't have, if you have time, research that. There's a movie called uh, Argo. I've heard of that. Yeah. Watch that. Watch the movie, Argo. That's fantastic. Uh, the book, the two books I mentioned on Wings of Eagles and Tehran, and uh, sorry, it's a Sun Tirade. Uh, Sun Tirade gives you a backstory on Arthur Simons. The on Wings of Eagles gives you a backstory on Ross Pro and Arthur Simons as, as, uh, as friends. Mm -hmm. And then Argo gives you a, a backstory on why all that happened. Okay, so Argo is directly about that. About the Iran. I'm going to have to watch yeah. that. Yeah. More yeah. that. That's cool. It's basically how the CIA sent in a guy to smuggle the embassy employees out. Hmm. It's That's pretty the, intense. The one thing they ever did right. Yeah. Bay of Pigs. Yeah. So well, that's cool. So that's a, that's a new segment that we're going to do every week. Yeah. So we'll have a different badass every week. Uh, Damn it. You just can't have anything nice, can you? Can you? So, in case you're tuning in just now and don't know how to rewind the video, you're an idiot. We're smoking the veil. It's probably my favorite cigar that we have. You know, it's like I smoke it and then I'll smoke it again, like within a couple weeks, mm -hmm. and I'm just like, eh, you know. Yeah. But it's like when I don't smoke it for a long time and then mm -hmm. I try it again, I'm just like, damn. This is has a lot of spice to it. It does. It's very it's, spicy. It does. And it's a, one of our more intense cigars, if you will. Uh, a lot of people say this is probably the strongest cigar we have. Really? Mm -hmm. I, you know, honestly, the cigars that we have, I don't even really consider them strong. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but some of them are harsh. Or at least I haven't heard. Yeah, they don't. That, that they're yeah, they, they don't have harsh flavors. Like no. they're they're always incredibly smooth. <clears throat> uh, I agree. Like uh, yesterday, uh, uh, did you see that we were tagged on Instagram by Patriot Cigar Company out of New York? We sent them a little care package with our cigars and a lapel pin. They tagged us, and hopefully they'll they're going to smoke them. Hopefully they'll enjoy them. Yeah, they're, they're going to return the favors. They're going to send us some cigars. Are they? Yeah. Wow, someone's sending something back. Yep. Wow, holy shit! The way you succeed in <clears throat> owning a small business is you support other small business. Yes. That's the first time someone's sending us something back. Mm -hmm. Oh, uh, Nacogdoches. Nacogdoches. So, um, let you do it. From the Cigars of Valor family, we want to give our deepest condolences to 
the Nacogdoches team for losing one of their uh, original founders. Uh, I don't know what happened, but we are uh, very sorry for that. And um, do you ever meet him? Yeah, Chuck. Yeah, he was a great guy. He's the uh, first guy I really met with Nacogdoches Cigar Co. And he was, uh, he was the leader uh, when you thought of Nacogdoches Cigar Co. When I thought of Nacogdoches Cigar Co., that's who I thought of. Yeah. As far as uh, being a leader for that establishment. And he, a uh, fantastic guy, uh, this great character, great personality. He was a, it was truly an honor to know him and meet him. And uh, we send our condolences to his family and the Nacogdoches Cigar Co. Uh, we'll be making a trip down there very soon. To go yeah, we need out. to visit them. Yeah. So uh, <clears throat> let's, uh, let's keep them in our thoughts. I know that I think they just had a, a visitation today down there. So let's mm -hmm. keep them in our, in our thoughts. Absolutely. Awkward silence, guys. You're given a moment of silence. Oh, is that what we're doing? A moment of silence. I didn't know that. Sorry, I fucked it up. It's, what it, no, it's it's done. It's over now. Fuck. It's over. I fucked it up. It's done. You know. You got the TikTok up and running, right? No, there's a TikTok now. Cigar so Devour <laughs> TikTok. Yeah, so we got a uh, little it. videos. Yeah, basically, it's just going to be small snippets of this podcast, uh, just the stupid shit, the idiocracy that ha takes place in here. <clears throat> Which, by the way, we hope y'all enjoy it. We have uh, we had some local feedback. And, uh, and they seem to really enjoy it. Yeah, people yeah. seem to enjoy the stupidity. Um, Which is surprising. Yes, it was uh, kind of on our list of like, would, <laughs> would that make it? You know, like, like, is that is people are just going to get fucking annoyed? Yeah. Now, now it seems to be like yeah. people, people get the humor. So after the feedback that we have received, we're going to keep doing this. This, yeah. is, this is here. I like specifically how Matt said that he can't share this with anyone yeah. because it's so bad. <laughs> <laughs> so I thought that was fucking great. Yeah. That was the best compliment ever. He said he's afraid to share it because it's so bad. He doesn't want to explain <laughs> it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's, uh, that's amazing. He said, "If you can just get past the first three minutes, it's it's pretty good." Mm. And then uh, the first three minutes bad? No, they're not. Thank you. Just uh, just trolling us. It's okay. It's all right. Um. So, December tenth, eleventh. December tenth. 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 Not the eleventh. No, the tenth. Right. Not the 11th. 9th? No, the 10th. Not the 9th. Not the 9th. The 10th. The 12th? The 10th. We are having a Christmas party at NAC, yeah, where it's El Dorado, Fine Cigars, and McKinney. And uh, that will be our final event for 2022. Uh, after that, we're going to keep the podcast going throughout the end of the year, but that will be our last event for the year. Um, man, we just, uh, we want to get the LPC series going and, uh, we're going to devote hundred percent effort to that. So with the LPC series, that's not going to be in any stores, correct? No. Hold on a second. Well, 747 flies they're, over. They're warming up our private jet right yeah. now. Yeah. So yeah, that's uh, what we're doing. So hopefully February we'll have the LPC series up and rolling and on the website, <clears throat> and it'll be one cigar at a time with the LPC series. Mm -hmm. Basically, we'll release one cigar, and when we run out of that one, we'll release another cigar. Mm. Yeah. So with the LPC series, what does LPC stand for? Limited Production Cigar. Okay, sure. So with that series, it is going to be the top of the line exquisite exquisite like special ones that we can't get mass production of so be on the lookout for that absolutely that's gonna that's gonna be like some rare cigars holy shit this cigar this cigar is phenomenal this is this has got to be my I, for, favorite I cigar. forgot how damn good this one is 
Now, this has got to be my favorite cigar that we make. This is, you know, I've been smoking um, something like the one year mm -hmm. that we were kind of testing. And I would say this hits way better. Like, it feels like when I was smoking the other ones, they just didn't hit. You know, you just didn't get that relaxation. Mm -hmm. And it's like this, I'm already feeling it. Absolutely. It's excellent. <clears throat> That's what I, I want to say. Probably my favorite rapper is St. Andrews. I love this St. Andrews tobacco. Uh, just the spice that comes with it. I, I love it. Mm -hmm. Probably my favorite. It is pretty good. It is. It is very good. So here's the deal. <clears throat> What if I told you that we have two cigar shops, two new cigar shops that are probably going to be on the shelves Who? next year? Uh, the one in Sherman that's opening up. Okay. And there's another, there's a new shop in McKinney. Oh, oh uh, what's it called? Um, what? Uh, it's Austin. <clears throat> there's there's one, one in Allen that I've never seen before. A gas lamp. At one off Stacy Road. Yeah, yeah. We'll have to go in there and talk with them because they're a big uh, supporter of law enforcement, first responders. And then uh, there's so there's two, possibly three that we're going to be. I know those two we definitely will have landed. Yeah. And then uh, we're going to go talk to another three after that. So uh, our goal is every fall we grow by five cigar shops. 200 per year. Yeah. If I didn't have a day job, I would definitely be rolling all the time. Well, uh, just trying to talk to cigar shop. One day we will cycle into that. Mm -hmm. Just uh, the hardest part of a small business is consistency, sticking with it. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, just time. Mm -hmm. It's always time. And you don't want to overload yourself either. Yeah. If you overload yourself, uh, you'll, it'll, it'll burn you out. You, you lose ambition. Don't want to do that. Yeah. Some people are like, oh, you got to go balls to the wall, 20 hour, 25 hours a day and shit. And it's like, with, with sort of a retail business, you don't really have to do that. No. With, uh, not with our business. At least. Like when I did my cryptocurrency shit, it was that like you had to do that. It just depends on the business. So it's like so many things are, uh, you know, most people are just like zero or one mm -hmm. when there's really like so many variables between. And it's, you know, we, we could go to every cigar shop and push it every day, you know, like, but we're just taking it easy, flowing in and yep. it's going to build over time. It's already been a year and yeah. almost a half. Yeah. And look at our progress. I mean, we're, it, it was slow growth at first, but now I think it's starting to speed up. Yeah. And it's like waves and yeah. you just got to get the waves to smooth and especially our online presence that it's really picked up mm -hmm. quite a bit. But that's also because we have some great people supporting us on the interweb, such as one mm -hmm. David, you know, believe it or not, when I do my trading videos, which get a lot of views, mm -hmm. I wear a cigar as a valor hat and I yeah. tell people about it. Good. So I don't know if that, Anything comes about it, but gets exposure, mm -hmm. tells people about it. So, absolutely, that's building. You know, we're ten podcasts in. Mm -hmm. I need to call that guy. Yeah. Anyways, I was gonna say, not a single fucking soul wants to get on here with us. Nobody. Do you, do you blame him after watching? I don't. I don't blame him. Yeah. You know, Matt did say that he would get on if the dinosaur was, <laughs> was yeah. here. And uh, we just have to correlate with his schedule because uh, like he, he, he told us our, his schedule and he's just got to re -brain. What? I get it. Where's the damn dinosaur? Uh, oh, it's under the table. <laughs> All okay, right. Well, thing well, I don't know what's going to happen here. This was not scripted or planned or targeted the oh god here we go <laughs> that shit was hilarious oh god fantastic
What are you doing with your hands, man? Oh, okay. oh car. Okay. <coughs> oh, man. Go ahead and talk. Talk about something. All right. So here's the deal. The downfall of society will come about because of dart stations. Um, so, hi, I'm Travis, uh, one of the owners of Cigars of Valor. Um, I am not proficient in anything, but one, th <laughs> one thing I am proficient with or at is annoying people. And uh, mm -hmm. I do offer my services. And if you would like someone annoyed to the point of insanity, Give me a call. My number is 1 800 eat shit. Again, 1 800 <laughs> eat shit. I wonder if we can actually get that number. <laughs> why is this so fucking off? I wonder fucking why. Fuck. Yeah, this is a pretty good spot. Eat shit. You know, I would put the cigar in its mouth, but you ate the fucking ashtray with this thing last time, and it's clearly stained. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's fucking great. Ah! How's your cigar? It was excellent. Wait, you done with it? No. Okay. I just thought I would say it was... It is absolutely excellent. Can this fucking thing just stand? <sighs> oh, so I managed. What's that, what's that episode of Family Guy with the frog? He's trying to pick up the wall. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Brittany's uh, Ford Raptor. Mm -hmm. <coughs> I managed to uh, disable my key on it with a, uh, the. F there was a my key enabled on it. Yeah, yeah, and they wouldn't turn the radio up over like t like twenty five percent. And so I found out the research. Most people would say they found out on their own, but I read on fucking Google, like everyone does. Nobody ever figures out shit, so don't believe them. That, if you get an OBD2 USB, uh -huh. which I had for my car, because I tuned my car, and you hook it up to this foreskin tool called Force, Forescan, Foreskin tool, you can <laughs> uh, pull the programming off of it and change the parameter for my key and disable it. Who put the my key on? I don't know. I have no idea. But I disabled it, and it worked perfect. There's only one key. You know, they that limits the power of that thing quite a bit. I know. I disabled it. Good. Good. Now you can get the full Raptor experience. Did you use super glue on this freaking label? No, I did not. Jesus. The Chinese. Oh, did our new band, did the bands come in? Yes. Right, good. The Chinese have infiltrated the band market and added in... Cheap glue. Um, what about the LPC band? Have you been working on that? No, but I'll have it done. Okay, awesome. It will be gold foiled, mm -hmm. like the red, nice. but it will be gold. Mm -hmm. What kind of gold do you want? Like this um, one, one type of gold. Okay, so you want like real gold? I want twenty-four fucking karat gold in there. Sounds good. We'll do 24 karat gold foil labels. Yeah. That's going to cost a lot of money. <laughs> yeah, unnecessarily fucking expensive. The cost of each cigar would... I can't even fathom that, how much it would go up. Let's see, a 24 karat, like to foil it in solid 24 karat. That would probably add... Let's see, because I had a little, little chunk of gold and it was like 
$60 to get. So to put that in a foil, it would probably cost 50 bucks per label, God, <laughs> 30 to 50 it. bucks per label, depending on how thin you made it. But yeah, for a label, yeah. No, we're, we're good. We'll just have it. We'll have foiling done to it to make it look authentic. <laughs> 24 karat. Uh, we we, we start, don't have that capital yet. People just start stealing the cigars and taking the gold off the labels. So, speaking of stealing. How the fuck did you get it to stay? I don't know. It just happened. Uh, speaking of stealing, I wanted to uh, tell you some ideas of mine for when we had a shop. Mm-hmm. Of what we would do to people if we caught them stealing in our shop. Mm. Mm-hmm. And what would we do? So when we build our shop, we're going to have a room in the back with no cameras, no windows, just one light in the center of it, like a can light, a metal table and a metal chair that's bolted to the floor with a handcuff loop. And if we catch you stealing, what we're going to do is we're going to take you in there. We're going to force you to sit down in that chair. We're going to handcuff you to the handcuff loop. We're going to turn on humidifiers in the back. Yes. And it's going to get up to 80% humidity in this room. Mm -hmm. There's no AC in that room either. And um, And then we're going to release 200 jackals in the same room. See, I was just going to make you uh, watch... You know, some boring ass TV, daytime television show. I don't know, just make you watch on loop. Endless commercials. There you go. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Constant fucking commercials. Yeah. That's what, that's what we're going to do. We're going to make them take Benadryl and then we're going to make them drink a bunch of coffee. So they have Jesus. to like stay up. Fuck. And then we're going to play the loudest, most annoying commercials. You remember that? Okay, so there was a meme that came out, Jesus, and it was about uh, being asleep at three o'clock in the morning, mm-hmm. and the loudest fucking commercial on earth came on. <laughs> so you remember that when we were little, like you fall asleep on the couch, and then you got that lady like fucking singing, and she's like, "Cause I'm your lady," and she's like fucking singing, and it's loud as shit. <laughs> Fuck that person that did that. So, anyways. I remember that shit when I was little and this meme came out. This meme, this fucking meme came out. Yeah. And it was the funniest shit. It showed this guy like sleeping and that commercial came on. And it was at, I don't know how they would do it, but they would, they would play everything quiet as shit the whole night until that fucking commercial came on. And then they would put the volume at 300%. And then while you're sleeping, the shit would be on like max volume. Yeah. And wake the whole house up. That is terrific. <laughs> you don't remember that shit? No, I don't. But okay. I want to take your word for Speak. it. Speak. I'm gonna. I'm gonna find that it happened. Um, I, I figured we could just put crab rave on that ten hour loop of crab rave. I did that once, and I had the quietest guy. You did that once. The quietest guy in the shop came to me and he goes, "If you don't fucking turn that shit off right now." <laughs> <laughs> I thought he was joking. He's fucking pissed. Oh my god! I'm going to kill you if you do not turn that off right now. <laughs> I threw my speaker on top of the booth. No one could get to. <laughs> I think it's still there. And then uh, Jesus. No, they moved shop. But uh, uh, I played the the song continuously through Bluetooth, and then I went inside the office, and it was quiet in the office. Nobody could. Couldn't hear anything. <laughs> so everyone in the shop had to hear that the whole time. In the background while you're doing computer work, the shop is burning to the fucking ground. What the fuck am I watching? That is some disturbing shit. <laughs> Anyways. Jesus. <laughs> um, just to keep it, no, uh, you know, not quiet in here. Here's what's gonna happen. Yeah, that'll be fine. I'm gonna retro hail this cigar. You know, if us not talking for two seconds disturbs you, maybe you should smoke a cigar. Oh shit! All right, this was it. Woo! 
three o'clock in the goddamn morning. <laughs> Do you remember that shit? Dude, I'm telling you, it was the loudest fucking shit. Jesus Christ. I just I remember waking up at three o'clock in the morning and that loud ass shit would come on. And then like and even even my dad would be like passed out on the chair and he'd wake up and be like, what the fuck? And then like everyone in the room just like That's uh, fucking it's funny. Yeah, it's yeah. excellent. By the way, you should retro help that. Ah, definitely not. Do it. You know, I've always, I'm not going to, okay? <laughs> I always wanted to <laughs> blow smoke rings with a cigar, but I think that would be fatal. Uh, I do it unintentionally every now and again. I can't, I can't figure out how to fucking do it. You have to like, you know how you do that? Like that, but. All right. Uh, how do we make that noise? Not deep throating. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, do that. But what happens is that then the smoke goes into a pipe. <laughs> but then the, the smoke goes into a, a, a section of your throat that's unforgivable. Okay. <laughs> With that sounds. <laughs> This sounds disgusting. <laughs> yeah, it sucks. <laughs> Gross. Oh, God, my eyes are watering. My nose is running now. I had to dust them off. <laughs> fucking throw the fuck up belching I, I do that on my on my trading videos I'll be like I'll start it out and I'll be like in this video <laughs> every, you know everyone watches the uh, <laughs> I normally don't belch like that, but I do yeah, it just to, what, just to fuck, fuck with you. Whatever. Constantly in the office, he's doing that shit. Remember that time? My old work. The same place that I threw the uh, speaker up on the, the booth and played the crab ray for two hours. <laughs> uh, I went... <laughs> really loud and uh one of the kids yeah. there ran over is like someone choking like he was like deeply concerned what the, about what about that giant baby sound oh yeah the, <laughs> <laughs> is there a giant baby in here? yeah my friend was like is there a fucking giant baby <laughs> god damn it oh, fuck my eyes are watering you know that should be an initiation right there if you like, if it's a retro hill, uh, so make them retro hill this cigar repeatedly. Why do you do that to yourself? I just it cleans up my sinuses. It doesn't. It just makes I know. Extremely Shut uncomfortable, up. Comfortable, and then you're comfortable with your sinuses being fucked. Already am. <laughs> um, I don't know. Maybe the retarded uh, dinosaurs will clean my sinuses out. Uh, fuck, dude. Um. I wanted to uh, touch on the subject real quick. What? Um, this weather that we've been having. It's rained for like six months. And, you know, we'll have like a week of 40 and 50 degree weather. And then suddenly it's 75 degrees for one day. And then it's back down to the 40s. Next and then day. it fucking rains for two weeks. Yeah. And our, our allergies are destroying us. So... Is that what fucked me up? This is an SOS from Texas. Help. For those of you that manipulate the weather, fucking stop. Go do it to California, please. Yeah. I agree. Um, <clears throat> so I got a story for you. All right. I was just told about this today. Um, 
the mayor of the town that our office is in. Okay. Apparently it was at some cert uh, thing, which is I think uh, some response team in our, the city their office is in that responds to natural disasters, CERT, whatever. I can't remember the acronym. FEMA? No, CERT. It's a thing of Rowlett. Uh, it's a Rowlett team. Okay. And well, I mean, I, of, you just revealed the city. So. No, no, I did. Fuck it. Um, Does that have anything to do with that Parks and Rec piece of shit fucking thing they have? No. Okay. Um, I guess there was a sheriff there, a Dallas County sheriff that backed into a pole and knocked the pole over onto the mayor's car. At this event. That's awesome. And sorry. No, the mayor wasn't in it, thankfully, but he had just bought No, I, I meant it's just, it's just funny. It's awesome. Yeah. I thought I laughed when I heard it. I'm like, that's funny. So I don't know if I should continue this. Is it bad? No. I want to meet this Dallas County Sheriff. <laughs> Is the new mayor Rowlett? Is he not doing his job? Like every other mayor that know. gets in office. Since I don't live in Rowlett, I really don't keep up with that shit. But wouldn't surprise me. Oh, so okay. You you got more to talk about? No, 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 go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, so you you mentioned that Dallas is now prosecuting crime. Yes. The Dallas we got County News. Breaking news. We don't we don't normally talk about politics, so we will talk about local. Politics for a split second. Local idiots. Breaking news. So for the past two years, our Dallas County District Attorney has made it where basically he will not prosecute you if the theft is under a certain amount. It's been like that for like five years. It's been whatever. I don't know. I lose track. Since I live in not Dallas County, I don't have to deal with that. Um, Basically, if you steal uh, merchandise or private property and it's under a certain value they will not prosecute you like 700 something dollars right yeah yeah well he pulled that back so now they're going to start prosecuting people in dallas county it's such a good argument Congratulations. That's the first step to making it where there's no crime. Or less crime. There's never less, like less crime. crime. That is fantastic. Well, you know, who would have thought that? That, that was a genius move to finally just go back. Did he get reelected? Yeah, he did. Nothing's ever going to fucking change. <clears throat> he got reelected and then he immediately changed that. Was that his fucking campaign goal or something? Uh, no, he didn't. What was the goal to make crime really high? I don't know. And then to switch it back so that it looks like he did something, as every politician does. Yeah, no kidding. Because most people have a memory of like two days, and they don't remember shit. What? Yeah, what were we talking about? No. Yeah, typical. What the fuck were we talking? About? Typical. No, no. Yeah. So, you know, it's not. Not really. I'm just for whatever side is helping. I don't even like politics. I don't like any side, any of them. I just want to live my life and make money. Yes. And every day it is harder and harder to make fucking money. Yes, it is. Because of shit. And I just want to be left the fuck alone. I don't care. I could say some terrible shit. I don't care what you do. Immoral, like morally, I care, but I don't. I don't give a shit. You can throw the fuck up or something. If, <clears throat> anyways, God, I don't. I don't care about any of that stuff. Now, if you're a pedophile, we're coming for you. I care. Where's your gun? On the floor. So I care about that, but I don't care about any of that shit. Uh, yeah. Um, pedophiles, we, uh, <clears throat> no, we don't feel like that. Um, so I wanted to talk about something real quick. Get your idea, opinion. Okay. Sure. A virtual locker membership. 
their cigars are better. You mean like a package? Like, you, you pay, yeah, pay a hundred dollars a month, you get a hundred dollars worth of cigars every month. Mm -hmm. And some stuff. <clears throat> yeah, we'll send you one of these to... each month. No, this when you sign up, we'll send you one of these. But you can also every month after that, you get a hundred dollars worth of cigars every month. Okay. Yeah, we have to discuss it. Figure yeah. some stuff out. Sure. That'd be cool. Maybe give him like a send him a hat or something as well. Sure. And then uh, whenever we come to open an actual storefront, we'll invite them down, have a good time. On my mom. Yeah. Fondle. Have some midgets. And that is Cigars of Power. That's our pocket. <laughs> <Yeah. clears throat> and that's it. Yep, we're, we're canceled. And we haven't said anything. That's not I don't know. Idea. How do we get sponsors? I want to know how to do that. How, um, what, what do we do? Who do we have to blow? Who do we have to jack off? I mean, what do we, what do we got to do? In order to get sponsors, you must first have to provide them with something that's more valuable than what they're giving you. Okay. Unless they're just nice. Which that doesn't exist. Ammo sponsors. Ammo companies, if you want to send, even though you're making a killing, if you want to send ammo for a range day, we will definitely make an exclusive mm. video for you. Um. So you mean to tell me if we send someone seventeen hundred dollars worth of cigars to, like, let's say, a gun company such as Sig or H and K, mm -hmm. they'll send us a gun in return? I don't know. Maybe with paperwork. Idea. <clears throat> I want you to go to a local gun store and uh, persuade them, make them an offer they can't refuse. Force them to buy our cigars. We do have a gun store that follows us on Instagram. We do. Yeah. Over in, uh, I want to say that's Rockwall, out there off 276. Really? Yeah. Hmm. Um, my father, he keeps his recreational vehicle over there. And in front of this recreational vehicle yard, the storage yard, there is a like a small, small strip center. Mm -hmm. This gun store is in there. I just happened to walk in there one day while he was fucking with his RV. And I told him what we do, and they followed us on Instagram after that. Nice. So we might have to go in there, make them an offer they can't refuse. We'll smoke in their lobby. There you go. <laughs> Everything in the store smells like shit. Afterwards. Maybe like if we go in there and give them a bundle of cigars, maybe they'll give us some ammo or something. I don't know. I'm just kidding, but maybe we can make that connection, like a business connection. We could. We could. Very well. Very well. Um, well, do you want to wrap up the podcast and maybe do some stupid videos? Sure. Yeah. Sounds like a good idea. Absolutely. From the six... From the Cigars of Valor Studios, located in Dallas, Texas, we will bring you some exit videos that are uh, exclusive and stupid that you can enjoy and uh, have a good time watching. <coughs> <coughs> So, I'm Travis, one of the owners of Cigars of Valor. Some, uh, a little bit about me, prior law enforcement, addicted to cigars, massive idiot, extremely annoying, and I'm proud of it. Thank you. It's on. What are we rap? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I did well. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs>